Hi guys, welcome back. So the floodgates are open and Diddy is being sued left and right by people who claim he sexually assaulted them, including a handful of men. Diddy has not been named in six separate lawsuits filed by Tony Busby, the Texas attorney who says he's representing up to 120 alleged Diddy victims. Of the 100 alleged victims, 25 were underage at the time of the abuse, the youngest being 9 years old, 14 years old, and 15. And four of the six filed so far are male accusers. You know, as the lawsuits were coming out, I did not rush to make a video of each one because sometimes you just have to take a break. Making Diddy videos every day, five times a day, is not good for your psyche. Taking all that in every day, you know, I know a lot of people, it's all about the ink, uh, the money and the views but it's not good for your psyche because these things are dark and demonic and it's not good to be obsessed with this Diddy situation. I've always been passionate, very passionate about Diddy going down. Everyone who knows me know I've never liked Diddy. So, so yeah, so even me being passionate you know about this whole thing and i want justice for all the victims right i want all of them all of these uh demons to go down but but if you go back and watch my duty videos you will know when and how and why god softened my heart and i'm so glad god softened my heart because now i don't have this strong dislike I still have the same passion. I still want the same outcome. I still cannot stand Diddy. But after he softened my heart, I I like that because now it's like, okay, I can still, you know, report on these things and not have this. I don't want to say hatred because I don't hate anyone, but it was like a strong dislike for Diddy. It was like on that borderline Maybe it was the H word, but I don't want to say it, but it was really a strong dislike for Diddy. So I'm glad. So check out my Diddy videos and you will know why and how and when God softened my heart that night. And I'm able to just kind of like report on his situation without all the extra anger. You know, I hate evil. We all should hate evil. And we all should shed lights in darkness, expose darkness, expose evil, you know. But with me, when I was reporting on the evil, Diddy's evil, demonic ways, I had this extra anger. I had this, you know, and I'm just so glad I'm able to report on these things on Diddy situation and not like, you know, so I'm glad. So you guys, I have all, all the Diddy lawsuits, all the new Diddy lawsuits and all the details. So let's get into it. So Tony Busby is representing up to 120 alleged Diddy victims. And the youngest that's been reported is nine years old. Well, he was nine at the time. That's what's being reported. Nine at the time, that's the youngest. Well, that's being reported because, you know, there could be younger. You never know. Don't put anything past these people. So this nine-year-old at the time was taken to an audition in New York City with bad boy records. The individual was sexually abused, allegedly, by Diddy and several other people at the studio and the promise to both his parents and to himself of getting a record deal. The claims are coming from victims who were seeking TV or music careers and the rapper promised to make them a star as well as those who were simply invited to Diddy's after parties, Busby said. 
Many of the new victims had previously told law enforcement that they had been abused, including some who cooperated with the FBI. Many have medical records that prove that they had been all worded and D R U G G E D. Busby added, D R U G S were found in their system. Weird D R U G S. D R U G S that you probably never heard of. Busby explained. One in particular that continued to pop up is a D R U G called Zaluxin or Trank, which, based on our research, is known as a horse tranquilizer. One individual who was 22 years old at the time she was assaulted said that the typical MO at one of these parties was that when you were handed a drink, and now we know what the drink is laced with something, that if you refused to drink it, you were kicked out of the party. Busby detailed. In another disturbing case, an adult pregnant woman. Claims she was all worded after attending a group dinner with Diddy in Miami. She wasn't drinking because she was pregnant, but whatever she drank at the table apparently was laced with something. She blacked out and she woke up in the same bed again, allegedly with Diddy in the mansion in Miami. Her The you know her her down below and her behind were torn and sore. You know I can tell you a situation that happened with my sister's friend and Naomi Campbell was at the event and let's just say I'll give details later. But let's just say if they do give you something, you must. You must take it or pretend that you're taking it, because if you don't, they will think that you are the ops. Yeah, they will think that you are an enemy, and you become like a target. Seriously, okay. I'll give details another time, but let's continue with all these new Diddy lawsuits. So Diddy has been accused of not only awarding a nine-year-old. But also, he's accused of D R U G G I N G ing and all wording a 13 year old girl at a 2000 VMAs, that's MTV Music Award after party with two unnamed celebrities. Did he allegedly aggressively approach the young girl with a crazed look in his eyes before sexually assaulting her at the event? She claims an unnamed male celebrity also all worded her while Diddy and an unnamed female celebrity watched. He attended the 2000 VMAs with then girlfriend Jennifer Lopez. She is not named in the lawsuit, by the way. The girl was 13 at the time and gone to Radio City Music Hall without a ticket, hoping to sneak into the event. She was unsuccessful, but met Diddy's driver, who she says told her to come back after the show. She claimed the driver took her 20 minutes away to a large white house with a gated U-shaped driveway. Once inside, the woman claims she was asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement. She says she saw many celebrities at the house and that there was widespread Cocaina and marijuana use. She accepted a drink, a reddish yellow mixture that wasted, that tasted like orange juice, then felt woozy. Looking for a place to rest, the girl entered what she believed to be an empty bedroom so she could lie down for a moment. Soon after, Diddy, along with a male and female celebrity, entered the room. Diddy aggressively approached the girl with a grazed look in his eyes, grabbed her, and said, You are ready to party? Diddy then threw the girl toward another male celebrity, Celebrity A, who removed the girl clothes as she grew more and more disoriented. 
the girl was held down by Celebrity A, who V, v yeah, he, yeah, down there, all with her, while Diddy and Celebrity B, a female, watch. After the male celebrity finished, Diddy then v all worded her. The girl, while Celebrity A and Celebrity B watched, Diddy attempted to force the girl to perform oral SEX on him, but she resisted by hitting Diddy in the neck. He stopped. The lawsuit says the victim eventually escaped the after party venue. Described as a large white house with a gated U driveway, U shaped driveway, before calling her father, who picked her up to take her home. After the assault, the girl fell into a deep depression, which continues to affect every facet of her life. I hope she has medical records because if her dad picked her up and she was 13 at the time, wouldn't the dad ask questions like, what are you doing? Whose house is this? You know, and I'm sure she looked disheveled because she was just all worded by two people and she was disoriented or D-R-U-G-G-E-D up. So, yeah, I mean, a, a real dad would notice something and question her and and hopefully he took her to the police station the hospital and get tests done because that's what a good dad would have done. Okay, so a man is accusing Diddy of assaulting him when he was just 16. He shared photo of the pair together at one of Diddy's famous white parties. The man, known only as John Doe, accused Diddy of assaulting him at the 1998 party while celebrities mangled nearby. There existed something sinister, a dark underbelly of crime, SEX trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, bribery, and prostitution, the court filing stated. Diddy is a menace to society, women, and children. Oh, yes, he is. The filing also pose a potential answer to the question of all the baby oil found in Diddy's home after his arrest, noting there are allegations of Diddy doozing victims in lotions or similar body oils laced with GHB so that the DRUG would be absorbed through the victim's skin and make it easier to assault him or her. So basically... All these baby oils, all 1,000 plus baby oils were laced with a DRUG called GHB. Wow. This really was an enterprise. So then he would tell victims, this is what it takes to be famous. What are you willing to do to become a star? John Doe was 16 and living in New York City when he received a highly sought-after invitation to the 1998 White Party in the Hamptons. When he received the invitation, he felt like he finally had the opportunity to rub shoulders with the who's who of the industry. He thought it could be his chance to break into the music industry. As John Doe entered, he spotted countless celebrities and A-listers who formed the music and entertainment industry. He recognized faces he had seen on TV and on the big screen. The young boy was making his way through the crowd and heading toward the restroom when he unexpectedly bumped into Diddy, the filing states. Shock, John Doe found himself face to face with Diddy a titan in the music industry, standing right in front of him at his own party. Diddy took an interest in Jan Do, Jan Do, sorry, John Doe and wanted to talk to him. They talk, They walked to a more private area near the portable restrooms brought in for the party. There, John Doe told Diddy 
He was a big fan of Diddy and shared his dreams of becoming a star. Diddy smiled, telling him he had potential and the look. When John Doe admitted his voice was not great, Diddy assured him that did not matter. Diddy abruptly told John Doe that he needed to drop his pants. John Doe was allegedly caught completely off guard by the request and asked Diddy to repeat himself. Diddy made himself clear. He instructed John Doe to drop his pants and expose his pee so that Diddy could inspect it, explaining it was a rite of passage and the route to become a star and also as a way to prove himself. Out of fear, anxiety, and the imbalanced power dynamic between him, between himself and Diddy, John Doe then dropped his pants and exposed his pee as Diddy previously instructed. Diddy moved closer and grabbed John Doe's pee and genitals with his hand. He firmly cupped and held onto John Doe's, you know, for an extended period of time. During this time, Diddy moved his hand in such a fashion to manipulate John Doe's genitals, squeezing and feeling them. Wow, Doe was only 16. Busby said Diddy was able to target young, vulnerable people through a criminal enterprise built on his success as a rapper, record producer, a record executive. As part of his pattern of abuse, Diddy manipulated both men and women to participate in highly orchestrated, orchestrated performances of sexual activity with both commercial SEX workers and unsuspecting party goers. Diddy has a profound contempt for women and a desire to dominate both minors and other men. His conduct shows a long-standing practice of denigrating, defeating, and attempting to humiliate men, women, and children. Okay, so we have another male victim identified as John Doe. He claimed he was orally all worded by Diddy in the stock room of the Macy's flagship store in May 2008. John Doe claimed he was working in the Macy's concession of Echo Clothing, a rival to Diddy's clothing line, Sean John. It was inside the stock room when Diddy and three of his bodyguards entered the area. The man recalled being struck in the back of the neck, and when he fell down to the floor, it was in his hands and knees. That is when the alleged assault began. Diddy said to him, Suck my D, Echo. He then continued the sexual act by thrusting his pee into the victim's mouth. Diddy proceeded to forcefully and brutally, orally, all word the, the Jan Doe, the guy. After the assault ended, the victim claimed that Diddy and his entourage of bodyguards made threats towards him. Diddy remained on the, on the retail floor handing out Sean John merchandise as if nothing happened. The victim claimed that he tried to report the alleged assault to Macy's security, but no action was taken. He was later fired by Echo, but it is unclear the reason for his termination. Okay, so let me understand this. So Diddy was at Macy's promoting his Sean John um, clothing line. And someone, one of Diddy's bodyguards, just hit the guy, the back of his head, the back of his neck, and he fell to his hands and knees. And then Diddy was like, suck my D. And then forcefully, brutally, orally, all worded the guy. Okay, 
you know what, I'm not even going to question anything because, okay, I mean, oh my gosh, this, okay, so this is why uh, there are going to be real victims and there are going to be liars, right? There are going to be people who probably did things with Diddy willingly, people who are of age who did things willingly, but then they are going to change it and say it was not consensual because of these lawsuits. So I don't know. This person, this one is not underage. They didn't mention that he was underage. So this guy, so did he just going knocking strangers <laughs> in the back of their head at a store at Macy's and then telling the guy to suck my and in the and the guy okay it's one thing to be all worded you know but the mouth the mouth you have a lot of control the mouth you you don't have to like you can't like you don't like you can't force your mouth to not open okay and not only that you can scream and not only that if he try, you could bite. You could bite that man. This it's different if they hold you down and then they all word you down below. But your mouth, your mouth, you really like they can't make you open your mouth. They would have to like be punching you and like doing things to you, right? Hurting you for you to scream to open your mouth, right? But Let's just say that happened. But you can bite that thing. You can bite it off. So then they would be in pain. They would stop. They would not want it anymore. They wouldn't, right? Because if you bite that thing, they would be in pain. They would <sighs> Okay, let's move on. Another anonymous victim alleged he suffered a SEX attack at Diddy's 2006 white party in the Hamptons. In the lawsuit, the man claimed that he was hired by MASS security to work Diddy's white party in the Hamptons. He alleged the rapper Diddy offered him alcohol throughout the night. It was during his second drink when he started to feel extremely ill. He said that he leaned against his truck for support and later made the realization that he was the R-U-G-G-E-D. While he was unwell, he claimed that Diddy pushed him to an, pushed him into an open van and overpowered him. The lawsuit stated that the man struggled to escape, but Diddy held him down and sexually M-worded him, you know, M-O-L-E-S-T-E-D. The victim pleaded for help, but Diddy reportedly said, you'll be all right. Since the heinous attack, the man who describes himself as an all-American guy said there is not a day goes by without thoughts of the traumatic incident. Okay, here's another victim, another lawsuit. This one is a personal trainer. He claimed Diddy passed his D-R-U-G-G-E-D body around like a party favor to other celebrities. The personal trainer, known as John Doe, details how Diddy and others allegedly D-R-U-G-G-E-D'd and repeatedly sexually assaulted him at an awards show after party in the music mogul's Los Angeles mansion on June 27, 2022. While in and out of consciousness, individuals at the party force the guy into sexual acts with both men and women. The, the personal trainer, physical disposition made it impossible for him to reject their advances or otherwise control his body. These individuals, including Diddy, essentially pass the trainer's body 
around like a party favor for their sexual enjoyment. The personal trainer who lives in California says he was introduced to Diddy through a fashion designer client who said she had she had shown the rapper his workout videos. Diddy was impressed by the training reg regime and wanted to meet the trainer in person. The unnamed fashion designer eventually invited the personal trainer to an exclusive awards show after party at Diddy's 61 million Hollywood Hills home. It moved he hoped would help him mingle with the stars and advance his career. Diddy had won the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2022 BET Awards at the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles that night. An accolade celebrating veteran artists who have made notable contributions to the music industry. He was pictured posing on the red carpet and made a lively speech dedicated to his mother, ugh, who was in the crowd while thanking God several times over. Mm. The guy recalls being picked up in a private car, a black Lincoln Navigator, on the night of the party, he says he was asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement as condition of entry, wanting to meet Diddy and to promote his business among the celebrity guests inside. The personal trainer agreed. He says he was not provided with a copy of the DN NDA. At this point, he was handed a tequila soda with cranberry juice mixer and instructed to drink it for access to the party. Wow. Eventually, a business associate access to the party. Sorry. Eventually, a business associate of Diddy guided the personal trainer from a large room, illuminated with red lights into a smaller room. Right there, the personal trainer observed approximately a dozen individuals, including several well-known figures who were engaging in group SEX activities. Once inside this smaller room, the personal trainer began to feel disoriented, dizzy, and weak, far beyond what he would expect from consuming a single alcoholic beverage. It became clear to him that something was wrong. He later realized someone had D-R-U-G-G-E-D'd him. At this moment of realizing his significant impairment, Diddy approached Plantive, the, the trainer, removed his pants, and began performing non-consensual oral S-E-X onto him. So Diddy was giving the trainer oral sex diddy then directed the personal trainer to perform oral sex on another celebrity in the room known as celebrity a who then spit in his mouth due to the haze of the drug he had been clandestinely served the personal trainer could not resist Diddy's coercion and ordering. He felt trapped inside of his own body, unable to control it or understand what was happening around him. At this point, the effect of the DRUGS escalated and he began to pass out. While in, in and out of consciousness, individuals at the party forced the trainer into sexual acts with both men and women. The guy's physical disposition made it impossible for him to reject their advances or otherwise control his body. The personal trainer claims he eventually lost consciousness completely and does not remember much after this point. His next memory is finding himself outside of his apartment, disoriented, without a shirt, and without his phone. He does not know how he got there. As a direct result of the traumatic events at Diddy's party, 
the personal trainer has suffered severe emotional and psychological trauma, financial harm, and a significant loss of livelihood. The personal trainer is seeking compensation for all physical injuries, emotional distress, psychological harm, anxiety, humiliation, physical and emotional pain and suffering, family and social disruption, and other harm of an amount to be determined at trial. The lawsuit also provides a photograph of a container allegedly used by Diddy or his agents to insert GHB into alcoholic drinks. This is wow. At first I thought, is this Cassie's husband, Alex Fine? But then I checked his Instagram account. So the 27th, the 26th of June, 2022, he was still posting. He was still posting on there. So maybe it's not him. But then again, with these accounts, sometimes you can have people posting for you. And sometimes you can have it where it automatically uploads pictures for you. You can schedule it. So I don't know. But I thought it was Alex Fine because Alex was Diddy's personal trainer and uh, that's how he met Cassie. You know what? It's not Alex because 2022, yeah, Cassie had already left Diddy for good. It was with Alex. Yeah, so, okay, so that's not Alex then. But, you know, um, Alex was Diddy's personal trainer. And, you know, everyone that Diddy have around him, he was having SEX with. Uh, so, yeah. So maybe it's going to come out that Alex is a victim of Diddy as well as Cassie was. That's how they met. That's how they bonded when he was training her. Because, listen, look at Alex, okay? Young and, young and fit, okay? Diddy is going around just abusing, sexual assaulting strangers, and you don't think he's going to test Alex? Everyone who comes around him must pretty much do him, do things with him. So Alex is not the exception. So Alex was a victim as well. I believe that Alex was involved in the freak offs as well. And also being the personal trainer. Oh, yeah. He definitely was getting down with Diddy and then willingly, unwillingly, we don't know. But he was definitely, he definitely slept with Diddy as well. That I believe without a doubt. If you look at the pattern of all the people this guy was sleeping with, all wording, abusing, and you're telling me this trainer of his, Diddy did not test, did not sample, did not, wasn't doing things. The guy is fit. He works out, you know, young looking, good looking and all that. Diddy was sleeping with just everybody, but he just going to skip over Alex, the trainer. <laughs> people who doesn't even work for him, he was abusing, let alone people who work for him. And they've come out and said Diddy abused them as well. So, yeah. I believe it's going to come out that Alex was involved in the freak offs, whether he was a victim, whether he participated willingly. But I believe it's going to come out during the trial. So stay tuned. Okay, so another victim, another lawsuit, Diddy sexually assaulted a woman with a TV remote after she accused him of ordering Tupac's death. Then, G all worded her gang. Yeah, so gang all worded her with his friends, she claims. Ashley Parham is suing Diddy for the alleged all word she claimed happened in 2018 after she accused him of the infamous M word over FaceTime. The $50 million lawsuit filed in the District Court of Northern California claims she met Shane Pierce, a friend of Diddy's, 
at a bar in February 2018. Pierce called Diddy, who was at a gathering with family, on FaceTime and showed people at the bar attempting to impress the people with his famous friend. Parham claimed she told Diddy she believed he was involved in Tupac's murder. And Diddy told her she, she would pay for her accusation. The lawsuit claimed Pierce invited her to his home in Orenda near Oakland. About a month later, on March 23, 2018, asking for help with his cancer drugs because he stated he was weak and unable to open his medications. But not long after she arrived, Diddy was there allegedly waiting to take revenge. She claimed he told her she she claimed he told her she thought she would never see him in person and held a knife to her face, threatening to cut her cheeks into a gasgall smile. Parham claimed she was saved from his grisly fate by Diddy's longtime assistant, Christina Corran, who told him not to as they could sell Parham for SEX. The lawsuit claimed Corran threatened to ship her overseas never to be heard from again. Diddy then ripped off her clothes and covered her body in an oil or lubricant and violently shoved the TV remote into her V. Mm -hmm. Diddy, while violently onwarding Parham with a television remote, told Parham that her life was in his hands and that if he wanted, he could take her and she would never be seen again, the lawsuit claimed. After all wording her with the TV remote and threatening her life, the lawsuit claimed Diddy told Pierce to turn, on, to turn her on her stomach, seemingly tired of hearing the plaintiff's blood gurgling cries. After her ordeal, Parham claimed she was eventually recovered enough to get up cover herself in a shirt, grab a knife, and go to, go to escape. However, Diddy was in her way and said he was surprised she was up and about because he gave her enough D-R-U-G-S to take out a horse. Parham claimed Diddy told her it was so much fun partying with her, but when she told him it was all word, he offered her money to say the SEX was consensual. When she refused and said she would report him to police, the lawsuit claimed Diddy told her no one would ever believe her and threatened her family. One of his friends then showed her what appeared to be a live stream of the front of her sister's house, the lawsuit claimed. Parham claimed Diddy then called his mother, Janice Combs, to convince her to drop the whole thing, demanding she not hurt her son and dismissing her claims of all word. Diddy told her he got away with worse crimes, referring to Tupac's M-word, but this upset one of the other men with him who drew a G-U-N. The men pointed the G-U-N at Diddy demanding he repeat what he said about Tupac's M-word until Parham tried to grab the G-U-N and it went off. Oh my gosh, this sound like a movie, doesn't it? The lawsuit claimed Diddy fled and Parham chased after him with a knife and he begged her, he begged for his life when she caught up to him. Oh my gosh, this is a movie. This, this is a movie. Parham raised a knife in a rage from the events that just transpired and with the intent of driving the knife into Diddy's back before he turned and begged. Oh my gosh. 
Instead of stabbing Diddy, she ran for the door, but claimed Diddy again blocked her path, and she sliced at his abdomen as she escaped. Parham claimed she ran to neighbors for help. As Diddy's car sped away from the house, the lawsuit claimed she told a deputy from the Gandhra Costa Sheriff's Office, who responded to the 9-11 call, that she was violently outworded, violently gang outworded by Diddy and his friends. She claimed the deputy told her several several neighbors called in, noise complaints, and to find a way to get home. He did not offer to take Parham home, nor did he call for emergency services, including an ambulance, nor any offer to take her to the hospital, nor any offer to help her recover her clothes or effects. The lawsuit claim. Parham went to the doctor three days later, but then go to hospital until three weeks after that because her injuries were still painful. Hospital staff administered a all word kit after she told them what happened and called the local Walnut Creek police. But when it was time to give a statement, Two, she was too scared to tell them it was Diddy who allegedly awarded her because she didn't think they would help. Instead, she left his name out of the report because she believed she would be ignored and or would be further harmed by defendant Diddy if he discovered she named him to police. Per him, claim she also reported the crime to the Oranda Police Department, but again was too afraid to name Diddy as one of her assailants. The lawsuit claimed none of the police she made a report to opened an investigation. Perham is suing for sexual assault and battery, abuse, false imprisonment, and kidnapping, demanding a trial by jury. Koram is also named in the lawsuit, accused of assisting Diddy predatory sexual behavior and proclivities by sending her up to be sexually assaulted and all worded by defendant Diddy, as well as assisting and covering up covering up the crime thereafter. Oh my goodness, what the heck did I just read? Okay, so let me see if I get this right. Let's summarize this thing. So she met this guy, Pierce, at a bar. He was FaceTiming Diddy, and Diddy was at a family gathering. So he FaceTimed Diddy, showing off to the people at the bar that he's cool, he's friends with a famous person. And then this woman said to Diddy, she believed he was involved in Tupac's shooting, M-word, you know? And then he said to her, you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for what you said to me. And a month later, this guy who she just met called her asking for help with his cancer drugs because he stated he was weak and unable to open his medications. So... Out of everyone, all his friends, that could help him open this medication, he called her and she ran over there to his house to open a medication. Oh my goodness. And Diddy was there waiting with a knife ready to take revenge. And his assistant, Christina Korem, his partner in crime, the Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, to Diddy, is there and threatening her too to ship her overseas. And Diddy all worded her with a remote control. And afterward, when she threatened to tell Diddy or go to the police, Diddy threatened her family 
and then one of Diddy's friends showed her what appeared to be a live stream of the front of her sister's house. So a live stream video on his phone, on his friend, Diddy's friend had a live stream of this woman's sister's house. So that means they have a camera in front of the sister's house and they're able to pull it up and show her. So how did they, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And that did not even stop her or convince her to not go to the police. Diddy then had to call his mother, that old hag, Janice Combs. So try to convince her not to go to the police. So then he had to call his mother, right? Janice. And then Janice told her not to hurt my son and dismiss her claims of all word. Oh my gosh. So even Janice could not. St <laughs> okay. So did he is known for taking people's live on aliving people yet he's trying to scare this women right you know his friends pull up a live stream of her sister's front door house whatever and that lady was still saying she's going to the police right and then did he had to call janice combs his mother and his mom is like pleading with her not to go to the police and telling her not to hurt her son. Oh my gosh. And then Diddy told her he got away with worse crimes, referring to Tupac's murder. But this upset one of Diddy's friends who drew a gun. The man pointed the gun at Diddy, demanding he repeated what he said about Tupac's murder. So Diddy has friends <laughs> who are Tupac's fans. So Diddy saying that made, oh my gosh, do you see how crazy that? So a friend of Diddy <laughs> who's in on this thing, who's in on this thing, who knew they were coming Right, because this other guy, this other guy set her up to come over and Diddy was there waiting for her. But all it took was Diddy saying, I've done worse crimes. <laughs> Referring to Tupac for Diddy's own friend to pull out a gun on Diddy and say, say what? Repeat that again? Like repeat what you just said about Tupac's murder? Oh my God. So the friend was about to go against Diddy, was about to turn against Diddy over Tupac. Oh my goodness. And this friend knows about Diddy's ways. He knows Diddy, Diddy, Diddy just ordered somebody in front of him with a remote, right? Diddy just, you know, gang all worded. They all just gang all worded her, right? And the friend knows about Diddy on aliving people. But Tupac was the freak. <laughs> Tupac, him on aliving Tupac was the straw that broke the camel's back. Are you kidding me? So the friend, so in the midst of all this mess, the friend just found out <laughs> that oh yeah, you can you can end with people, you can abuse people, you can gang all worded people, but what? You did what to Tupac? Yeah, that's crossing the line. Think about this. This is a movie. And then the lady tried to grab the gun, but the gun, um, it went off. Like a freaking movie. Picture the whole thing. We've seen this in a movie. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Is this real? Is this real? And then, <laughs> and then Diddy. Diddy freaking fled. And the victim, the women, chased after Diddy with a knife. And Diddy was begging for his life when she caught up to him. <laughs> so what was his friends were doing? His partner in crimes that were there. So they just was just like, okay. And then well, <laughs> so the tables turned. So you see how in a movie, like the the hero 
gets the weapon, and then the bad guy is now like pleading for his life. So, but what happened to his friends? These criminals, these people who've done the crimes with him and for him. So they just stood there and just let Diddy <laughs> beg for his life. Oh my God. This is crazy. And then she ran. She didn't stab him, right? She ran for the door, but Diddy blocked her path. So now, <laughs> after pleading and begging, Diddy, <laughs> Diddy is now, he got the upper hand again. He got the upper hand, right? And she sliced him, you know, on his stomach as she escaped. So that means Diddy should have a, a mark, right? Some kind of mark. I don't know if it, I don't know. If it healed, then some people, it will leave a scar forever. So uh, I don't know. This is, and then she escaped. She ran to neighbors for help as Diddy's car sped away from the house. So Diddy, so when she ran, Diddy got in his car and left. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And this was not even Diddy's house. This was the guy that set her up, you know, to hope for her to come over and open his medication because he could not open his medication. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is, I'm not even, no, this is, this should not be funny. But it's just like, uh, is this real? And then when she did the file the police report, she left his name out again. She left his name out twice, twice because she was afraid. Oh my gosh. If you guys do not rewind what I just read, the lawsuit, and then just picture it vividly in your mind. You would see that's a movie. We've seen this in movies. Oh, my gosh. So there's a real police report then, right? But because she didn't have, she doesn't have, she didn't put Diddy's name. So it, it tells me, this is what I think. This, they're going to throw this on Diddy. Whoever, there's someone that wants to throw this made-up story. Maybe something did happen like that. But I think they just want to gonna throw this at Diddy because what? I mean, Diddy has a friend at the bar who wanted to show everyone that he's friends with Diddy, <laughs> and he FaceTimed Diddy, and then the lady's like, "Oh yeah, mind you, she don't even know the guy, but she, you know, went." And then said to Diddy on the freaking phone and said, oh, yeah, I think you got something to do with, with Tupac's murder. And then Diddy's like, oh, yeah, you're going to pay for your accusation. And then a month later, the guy called her saying he needs help opening his medication. And then she ran over there. And here goes Diddy waiting for her with his criminal friends, his bodyguards. And then uh, Christina Coram, his partner in crime, his assistant, his partner in crime, they're all there. And all that happened, right? But the funniest thing is when <laughs> Diddy could not convince her to not go to the police. Diddy being, Diddy is this cold-hearted, heartless demon, right? But he's pleading with her not to go to the police. One of his friends pulled up uh, a live stream of the victim's sister's house. <laughs> and that didn't stop her from still saying she's going to the police. And then did he call his mother, Janice? And then Janice is like, you know, do not hurt my son. <laughs> and then Diddy was still talking ish about, you know, he's done worse crimes. And then one of Diddy's friends said, said, what? You did what to Tupac? And he was about to go against Diddy over Tupac. <laughs> it's a mess. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. It's my first time reading this lawsuit uh, while I'm recording. So that's why I'm just like, what? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I've had a lot to say. But I'm going to end it here because I'm still stuck on this lawsuit. I can't even, like, oh, my gosh. I really believe something like this happened to someone. But they're just going to, someone wants to put this on Diddy. Want to add this on Diddy because his name is not on the on the police report. So that means they will provide a police report. But just know that his name is not in it because she was afraid. So no, I'm not believing this, this, um, this lawsuit, not this one. Again, there will be real victims and there will be crazy made up ones. So yeah, this is crazy, you guys. This is crazy. I really want to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think of this one? This one. And you know, I, I this is this is why I said you gotta take a break from all these ditties situation, all these things that's coming out because this are the, that's why I was just like, oh no, I can't. That's why I'm doing this video and I'm just like, you know, reporting on all the new, all the latest lawsuits in one video because this is why. It's, it's crazy. It's getting ridiculous. And yeah, I still want justice for the victims, you know, but this is just going to be, it's going to be more stuff like this, more wild, crazy situations that don't make sense. So anyway, you guys, that's all I have. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please like, please share, please subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.